I invite you into my kitchen here today to share some perspectives with you in regards to hanging. So as you can see here, I have an overhead bar that's placed in between my um, kitchen opening here. So while I'm waiting for my coffee or for anything else, I can just hang and do some work. We'll look at two things today. The first thing is essentially why you might want to hang. And the second thing are different variations of hanging that you can use for different purposes. Whether that is something like pre or rehabilitating some shoulder issues, or whether it's incremental work in uh, contribution to some other progressive things you're looking at with regards to overhead pulling. So the first thing is, why would you want to hang? Uh, well, first of all, the shoulder itself can benefit hugely from hanging. Um, what actually we're working with, uh, there are of course different types of hanging, but in the most common type of hang, which is a completely passive hang, which we'll get into in a moment, we're working with a traction force of the shoulder in which essentially we're using the modality of gravity to decompress the shoulder joint and there are other effects that carry over to the spine as well. A really nice little book that was recommended to many people by Ido Portal as well as popularizing the perspective of hanging with regards to shoulder health and many other benefits is a book by Dr. Kirsch. Um, called Shoulder Pain, The Solution and the Prevention, I believe the name is. This particular book shares the perspective of a shoulder surgeon, Dr. Kirsch. Um, it begins with an anecdote when he was out with his children, and his children were using the monkey bars, or perhaps the eight bars, as we might call them. Um, and he realized that his children could quite easily traverse from one end to the other along the monkey bars. When he tried this himself, um, he realized that he was unable to do this, completely unable to do this. No, not only was it an element of physical unpreparation, um, there was also an element of a psychological um, perspective that he felt unsafe and he was unable to do this. At this point, he realized that he had lost something that was quite critical when you look back in the evolutionary um, scale. Um, our nearest ancestors, although they are not um, complete brachiators, they don't you know, only locomote mainly through um, hanging and using their hands, um, it is definitely something that still exists in our anatomy. And what you can find is that very many people, myself included, whether through training or through just daily life, um, can end up with certain shoulder issues that are very impingement related. So impingement is when very often you can get certain tendon related pains, particularly when lifting the shoulder above the um, horizontal level. If you do feel a pinching in there, in some cases, if you don't use hanging in your regular protocols, it can be related to compression in the glenohumeral joint. And something as simple as hanging in its different variations can very well help with this. But then this brings us to our next point. Because it's something that's habitual, for example, if you do not hang from an overhead support on a daily basis, you will not have the range or you will not have the um, space in the shoulder capsule um, to alleviate some of these issues that can occur. So it has to be something that's done on a daily basis. So while, for example, I provide programs with many people and I program different types of hanging for them and we change these types of hanging on a, a very regular basis, I do also hope that they and themselves, and you as well, take these protocols into your daily practice. Because the shoulder joint, what Dr. Kirsch revealed, is actually malleable. Um, essentially, the uh, action of the humeral head um, against the acromial process can create space in there, whereas traditionally it was often thought that when space was lacking, you had to quite forcefully go in there with a surgical procedure and remove elements of bone and cartilage to make the space. Dr. Kirsch revealed that this is not particularly the case. In most cases, he found even people that were even two weeks out of having shoulder surgery, he prescribed these certain hanging methods and they recovered. Um, so essentially what we'll start with is the basic protocol that he introduced 
which is essentially just the passive hang. Now, just to go into the bar that I'm using here, there's nothing special about it whatsoever. It's just a basic screw-in bar that you can pick up from Decathlon, which is quite a common sport outlet, and they do different sizes for the doorway. I personally haven't put any screws in this because it's not my apartment. Um, however, because of this, it means that I don't use it for any inverted work. This is purely for work just for hanging or I use my gymnastics rings as well. Um, you can also, of course, use different types of bars that go over the door frame. This is not a problem at all as we're just using it for basic hanging work. Um, likewise, if you're lucky enough to have a really nice apartment that has steel or wooden beams, these are also fantastic if they're within reaching distance or likewise you can just hang something like gymnastics rings over them and you can use the rings instead. Um, just two points that was actually brought to light by Iro Portal as well is that if you find that you're quite restricted in your shoulders in terms of mobility, um, a better option for you can be the gymnastics rings to hang from because they will essentially take you into that place where you have the least range. Likewise, if you're someone who has quite mobile or hypermobile shoulders like myself, you may find benefit from using something that's more stable, such as the um, stable bar here. Starting with the passive hang, it's very, very simple. Um, all you're going to do is hold on to the bar. Now, you can start off quite simply with a shoulder width grip. However, I do encourage you to also explore the closer variation with the hands together. People very often find that there's a lot more restriction built in there. I know myself personally in the past, this was something I had to deal with and develop over quite a long time. Um, a note on the wide grip, I find that there's normally not so many restrictions with the wider grip. So shoulder grip is a good place to start. You're just going to hold on to the bar with as little tension as is required to maintain yourself hanging from the bar. Now, I've actually got my feet on the floor, that you can't see it though, but I'm working with my feet um, on the tops of the toes behind me. Now, if you have some extreme shoulder pain or even shoulder injury, you can of course use the feet flat on the floor to take some of the weight. Ultimately, what you want to be able to progress to is a comfortable passive hang in which your feet are off the floor However, this would be done when hanging from a higher bar. Why? Because the passive hang is passive because we want to completely relax the entire body as much as possible outside of the tension of holding the hands so you maintain attached to the bar. This basically means that in the initial instance, the passive hang is an exercise to see not how long can you hang, bro? But no, can you relax, bro? What you'll find is that as you breathe, and I encourage you to explore your breathing as your passive hanging, is that you'll start to realize areas of tension that you may not have even noticed that you are holding before. So first of all, I start with the shoulders. Is there more I can relax in the shoulders so I essentially feel my body coming deeper and heavier into the hang. The next step for me is to start breathing into the spine. And what does this mean? It means that essentially as I breathe in, the diaphragm relaxes and I start to feel from my thoracic spine down that it opens up even more. I breathe in, my spine extends, and when I breathe out, my diaphragm contracts and it pulls my spine back together and I can take advantage of this exploration of the spine extending and contracting. I breathe in. It extends and now in this extended position, I breathe against it. I breathe in. I'm researching and looking into my lumbar spine and I breathe out. Breathe in. Coming even deeper and breathing out. 
Now there's a couple things to mention with the passive hang if you do start to experience, for example, any pain in the shoulders or even in the lumbar spine or anywhere else in the back. It means that you will just have to hold a little extra tension to make sure that you're not going directly into that affected area. However, it should not be avoided. In my experience in working with people with back pain, very often, after just a few hangs, if it's something they've never done before, they can start to feel relief from certain symptoms. However, likewise, in the same breath, some people who are not aware of any existing issues with their spine, they will find it with this movement. So if this is you, don't freak out. It can be very common that you start to hang and then you think, oh my God, I can feel my lower back, this exercise is bad for me. It's not, you just have a lumbar spine that's in bad condition. And in many cases, this can be to do with um, held tension in that area due to a number of reasons. One reason can be, for example, if you spend many, many hours sitting in a chair, this can cause a lot of decompression, sorry, a lot of compression in the lumbar spine as you're normally in a position of anterior pelvic tilt where your spine can be quite compressed in the lumbar region but likewise another symptom which I call deadlift back and deadlift back is essentially if you quite exclusively train with heavy weights a lot of the time your lower back is going to be really really glued up and holding a hell of a lot of tone so this movement although it will start to release that it may reveal issues and compressional issues in your lumbar discs that you were not even aware existed. Fear not, fear not. Keep practicing and you'll see the, um, these issues change over time. One last thing I wanna point out with the passive hang is that if, again, you can't see my feet, but if you're holding your feet up behind you, which can often be the case with people when you just ask them to hang, you are not relaxing because you're holding your feet in the air. Likewise, if you're hanging and you have your feet slightly apart, you're not relaxing because there's some tone in your muscles holding your feet apart. So I'll say it again, can you relax, bro? Um, this is a personal investigation and you have to just practice and check it out yourself. So that was a basic passive hang. For me, I think a good benchmark ultimately is to be able to hang passively from the bar without any pain for two minutes. This is not something, especially if you're new to this, that you'll be able to do right away. In fact, in the initial instance, if you've never really worked with any, holding any overhead bars at all, you may find after 15 seconds, the pain in your hand from the skin is too much to even hold onto the bar. Again, this is something that will develop over time and it takes conditioning of the skin, which ultimately just takes repetition and experience. I recommend always in the initial instance that you try to build up during your hang um, 60 seconds of accumulated time under tension or one hang of 60 seconds. So what does this mean? It basically means that if I'm only able to hold on to the bar for 15 seconds, I'll hold on for 15 seconds with as much assistance as I need from the floor. I'll stretch the hands out slightly. I'll maybe do something else and then I'll come back and I'll do a second 15 seconds, and I'll make sure I'll do four times 15 seconds within the space of five minutes to make sure that I get a good amount of hanging in for that particular um, set. Now, moving forward from the passive hang um, is the active hang. Now, the active hang can also be used, for example, if you really have some shoulder issues that if you completely relax, it really aggravates the area. So for example, I've had multiple shoulder injuries through training injury and also trauma. And there have been instances that if I were to completely relax my shoulder in that time with my body weight underneath, um, it was actually not so good for the connective tissue because it was already in a state in which it had been forcefully, essentially elongated and become unstable. So if, if this is you, if you're suffering from unstable shoulders, the active hang is your point, um, is your hang that you want to go to. Now the active hang, most importantly, you start from a passive hang position. Now the elbows need to remain completely straight. Why should the elbows remain completely straight? 
because essentially the passive hang is going to be a pull from the scapula. So it's just going to be your shoulders pulling down. And if you're bending your elbows, it tricks your mind into thinking that, you know, you're, you're pulling the shoulders down, but it's not. You're actually just bending the elbows. In the first instance, this can be a really um, challenging coordinational issue. What you've got is um, a lack of separation between certain motor maps in your body, whereby, as I mentioned, your brain is telling you, okay, if I pull the shoulders down, it means I go up but then your body is confusing that with bending elbows to pull you up. So with this movement, the first challenge can just be to keep the elbows locked when you do the pull. Now I want you to observe my scapula and how it moves as I perform this movement. So the feet come off the floor and then I pull the scapula downward. And I hold for time. Now, in the initial instance, when you're working with this active hang, this might happen to you when you try to pull your shoulders down from the passive hang. Absolutely nothing. So if this is the case, you're gonna need some assistance from the feet to get you up into the active hang position so that you can then hold it isometrically. So there's two options to do this. And if you're using a low bar, like I am myself, I can just use my feet on the floor. And what I do, my toes are on the floor, I have my arms straight, and I push at the same time as I pull the shoulders down. And now that I have the active, active hang position, I just remove the feet and I hold that position for the time required. And then I come back down. So this is a foot assisted active hang. Elbows locked, pushing with the toes, pulling the shoulders directly down, remove the feet. Now I hold for a few seconds and I come down. Likewise, if your feet don't touch the floor, just grab yourself a box or a step or something like this and put it underneath so that you can use your feet on it to assist you into that active hang position. Now, one of the common mistakes you'll see with an active hang because we're actually looking to pull the shoulders straight down, if this motor information is not there in the body, again, the body will make a compensation and interpret it as a different movement, just as the same as we were saying that if we're pulling the shoulders down, if you don't have separate motor maps developed for this, your body might just think bend elbows. So what can happen is that when I'm thinking, okay, pull down, the body does more of a pull to the front, and what you get instead is a type of lever. And a front lever is essentially when we start to see the closing of the shoulder angle here. This is the shoulder angle, and we want to keep an open shoulder angle in the active hand so that the scapula is just sliding down the back of the rib cage. Essentially, you know, anatomically, if we're being quite it's specific about it, we can say scapular depression, but it's never really that specific. A good friend of mine has recommended using the term more resist the force. And I like this because I'm also a Star Wars fan, of course. So if we're resisting the force and we're pulling the shoulders directly down, this should not include a closing of the shoulders. So as I said, one of the common mistakes you can see with the active hang is people go active hang. This is not what we're looking for. So this again is something that you have to practice, even film yourself from the side, take a recording so you can see if this is something that your body is misinterpreting. Now for repetitions for the active hang, again, um, with regards to a benchmark, I think it's if you're able to hold an active hang for one minute, um, this is a, a really nice benchmark to, to show that you have um, some conditioning and understanding of scapular depression, as we mentioned the problematics with that term, but with the scapular depression when using the active hang. Um, what I normally program for people in the very first instance is quite simply uh, five reps with three second holds in the top position, which builds up um, a total of 15 seconds time under tension. 
I will, however, over time increase this for people until they're working for repetitions that are building up 30 seconds of time under tension. So for example, for a few weeks, you might start with five times three second holds. And then over time, you might start building it up to, you know, four times five second holds, which takes you to 20 seconds time under tension, and ultimately bringing yourself up to either six times five seconds for isometric holds, or something like even 10 for three second isometric holds. Um, if you do have shoulder instability issues or you're currently suffering from um, shoulder injury, and this can even be performed with complete rotator cuff tears, if the shoulder can be lifted above the, um, well, too horizontal without too much pain. And this was something that was um, suggested by Dr. Kirsch in his uh, book that I mentioned. So um, now we're looking at the um, active hang. One of the most important things to think about is how often should I be doing this? And it really depends from person to person, but essentially the more you need it, the more you should do it. And it sounds quite obvious, um, but just with regards to time under tension as well, if you do have an existing injury, um, you're gonna be thinking more about holding a longer time under tension to help build the stability and the, um, the experience um, of the shoulder joint in holding the shoulder into the, um, sh into the socket. So something like one times 15 seconds active hang or two times 15 seconds active hang, again, will work you between that 15 seconds and 30 seconds time under tension. So in regards to how often to do this, you know, this is exactly why I'm making this video because this is not really something that should just be done, you know, once a day and then, oh, I've done my exercise for the day. The reason this bar is here in my house is that it structures the movement environment around me. It basically means there's a bar here and I'll hang from it. If there's no bar here, I won't hang from it. So every time I pass this bar, I may even just give a swing, or I might do a few sets, or I might end up spending five minutes on the bar. And this is what I encourage you to do as well is accumulate time over the day, uh, which is why I'm not so much of a fan of saying, okay, you should definitely do it for 30 days, for five minutes a day, or something like this. I think one thing that is very beneficial to invest in is just a habit of when you see something overhead to hang from it. So do have these specific protocols that you're using. For example, yeah, I get my minimum of, you know, 30 seconds time under tension a day, 60 seconds time under tension a day. But around that, around that, use a variety of different hanging things, which we'll just get into now. So the next thing we're gonna look at is now essentially an active arch. An active arch is now thinking about working with scapular retraction. As I said, using these very specific terms, such as scapular depression or retraction, is never quite accurate, but it's just useful for some terminology. But basically, the idea now is that when I go into my active hang, I pull the shoulders down. When I go into the active arch, I'm going to think about lifting the chest as high as possible into a flattened position. It's almost as if someone has a, a, um, a string here and is pulling my chest upwards. As I said, we're not working with a closing of the shoulders as our main intention. Um, therefore, the feet are going to be behind you as you're in more of a global arch position and the shoulders come backwards. So that would essentially look like this. First of all, I go through the phases as always. Passive hang, I go into active hang, and then I arch. Back to active hang, passive hang. Passive, active, arch, hold isometrically, active, passive. Again, what you'll find in the initial instance 
is there's not much scapular retraction happening and you may well feel that you're only just levering. If this is the case, and it is a very, very common case, again, use your trusty friend the box. So I'm gonna use some foot assistance with this. And basically now what I'm gonna do with the foot assistance is get as much scapular retraction and depression as possible. So what I actually really want you to think about with the active arch is that essentially, if you place your hands in front of you and you pull the shoulders back, this is what we're looking for. But instead of our hands in front of us, the hands are overhead. This is essentially the position that we're looking for. So instead of resisting the force in the horizontal plane, like this, we're resisting the force overhead. I can use my box to simulate this. I stand on the box, keep the elbows locked, I come underneath, I use an assistive active hang, I'm using my feet to help me, I bring the chest up. Now, this allows me to get a position in which my scapula is more retracted in the position that we mentioned before. Now, I can just hold this position and squeeze the shoulders backwards and work for isometric holds. If I can maintain some scapular retraction, I'll take the feet off the floor. So using the foot assistance, and now I feel I've got scap retraction, I take the feet off, hold isometrically, and I come down. I go back in again, lock it in, the feet come off, hold isometrically, and come down. Now, how do you know if you should take the feet off or if you should keep the foot assistance on? Well, quite simply, if with the feet you feel, oh yeah, I have some good scapular retraction here, and then suddenly you take the feet away and it just drops, you haven't built enough neural drive, you haven't built enough information in that retractive position to be able to maintain it. Therefore, you need to use some more assistance or the exercise is not gonna be optimal. So what you can do to progress between these two points is start reducing the amount of assistance that you use from the feet. So for example, instead of using two foot assistance to hold you for the isometric, you just use one foot. And likewise, you can just start decreasing the amount of pressure that you're using in the foot to assist you in the movement. Ultimately, what we want to be able to work with is an active hang which is completely unassisted, sorry, active arch, which is completely unassisted, in which passive, active, arch, the shoulders come together, I hold isometrically, come down, passive, active, arch, and locking in the scapula. So I spoke briefly a moment ago about time under tension, and I spoke about information, and I spoke about neural drive. So what is this? Um, it's quite a simple idea. It's the idea that when people think that there's strength missing in a part of the body, and namely parts of the body that don't get so much attention, such as the scapula perhaps, um, in many cases, the idea of strength is quite linear to thinking about. Many people, they'll tend to think that, okay, there's strength lacking there, I need to build muscle. This is not the case. I've seen some guys with huge traps, huge traps um, that essentially just don't function. So there's more size to strength than just the, the cross-sectional size of your muscle. It is, can you actually activate those muscle fibers? Um, the actin and myosin filaments are just on off switch. It's not a gradation. So regardless of how many you know, muscle fibers you have developed, if you're unable to contract those muscle fibers, they become quite 
useless. However, there is a great upside to this because it's neurological. It means that once you build the information and experience in the scapula, you will become stronger. It will relate to strength. You will have more strength to be able to pull the scapula backwards. Not only does this help with things like posture in your daily life, but it can also help you in your practices quite significantly as well. So these are two prank hanging protocols that I've just shared with you, really, really simple. The passive hang and the active hang. Um, I would use them daily, definitely. Use them every single day, and as I said, short of getting into specific prescriptions about how much and everything like this, go for a minimum of just doing a set of um, each one, building up 60 seconds time under tension, and everything else on top of that is not gonna hurt. Make a habit of just doing something with the bar every time you pass the bar, and I'll show you a few other things that you can do with the bar with regards to hanging now. So one thing, I like to do, um, once I've actually built, or I have someone who's built some neural drive in their scapula, to keep the retraction idea there and to keep that scap alive, um, we'll use the body weight load to work with essentially just retractions. Um, this can in some cases be a more advanced level thing because if you don't have the retractional ability in the first place, this movement is not gonna be much good for you. But if you do have it, this is a nice, easy way you can keep the scap alive, and I'll show you how it transfers to things like um, pull-ups and other overhead pulling in a moment. So essentially, I'm gonna use the same idea as the foot-assisted active arch, but what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna stay in the arched position without going out into passive hang. I'm gonna stay in the active arch, and I'm gonna work with repetitions of just retractions. And this is personally something for me that really helped develop the neural drive in my scap. So quite simply, I go from passive, active hang, active arch, and now I'm in my active arch. I'm gonna hold the global position here, keeping the elbows locked. I drop out of it and I pull back. And because we're working for reps now, I might do one second holds, I might do two second holds, but generally again, I'll try to build up around anywhere between 15 seconds to 13 seconds time under tension. It may be more, it may be less. Um, ultimately, the main thing is that over the course of the day, over the course of the week, over the course of the month, over the course of the years, experience has been built with overhead hanging. So this was the um, active arch with retractions. Another couple of things I use quite simply um, is some movement of the scapula whilst I'm hanging from the bar. So of course, we already looked at pulling directly downwards, but one thing we can look at as well is this idea of retraction and protraction. Retraction, and protraction. Now, I don't advise you to go digging really deeply into this, trying to get maximal retraction, maximal um, retraction when you're um, hanging, but use it in the initial instance to explore. As I already mentioned, you may find things there that you did not realize were there. I have a personal experience of this, of the first times that I started using hanging many years ago. And um, I found something in my shoulder that um, was not happy with me. Um, but if I hadn't found it then, I would have found it again later, further down the line, perhaps in a much worse scenario than simply overhead hanging. So now that I'm hanging here, what I'm gonna do, I just pull the shoulders back and forward. Now I'm quite simply in more of a passive hang, but it is, active because I'm, well, more active because my feet are off the floor, I'm just bringing the shoulders forwards and backwards. I can, of course, do this in full active and pull it backwards and forwards, but as I said, this is more the position where if you have any shoulder issues that can be irritated by this position, it's more likely to come out in the active hang variation because 
you're more under tension. So I'm just pulling backwards, forwards. And what we can do now is put two of those things together and start working with scapular circles. The idea that essentially I'm hanging and then I pull active, retract, elevate, protract, depress, retract, and we're working in these types of circles. So from here, I just come up, I come forward, I let it come down, I retract in the bottom, I come up, and I have a visualization happening with my thoracic spine or in the upper region of my rib cage that I'm drawing a circle through space. I come back the other direction, back over the top, over the top. And these are variations that you can work with as well. Um, other variations for hanging, just for kitchen hanging as we can call it, are things like one arm hanging. Now, I encourage one arm hanging, to be honest, for, for everyone who is already exploring hanging. I don't necessarily see it as a progression for the way it's being used here. It's more variation, but of course it can be more intense because you're hanging from one arm. Now, if it's your first introduction to one arm hanging, start of course with your feet on the floor and take as much tension as you need, but do load the shoulder again to see if there's anything hiding in there that hasn't been brought to light through your previous training habits. So as I'm just hanging from the bar here, one thing I would also do that helps emphasize some stretching actually in the anterior chain here where there can be a lot of tightness, especially if you're quite kyphotic, is keeping my rib cage pulled slightly down. What does that mean? Well, if I let the rib cage just pull up, I'm not attending to perhaps any tightness that can be in here affecting the movability of the shoulder joint. So what I'll quite simply do from this position, keep the abdominals tight, keeping the ribs down, and then hang from here. My feet are on the floor. I can go more passive if it feels safe to do so, relaxing as much as possible, keeping the ribs down. And again, I would hold for time and using the same prescription as before of anywhere between 30 seconds and one minute of time under tension, I'll just split them between the two arms. So I'm looking for 30 seconds of time under tension on each arm. So again, that might just translate to 15 seconds on each arm in the beginning stages as I develop. I'm working here with more of a passive active hang, but likewise, you can most definitely work into the active versions just by using the foot assistance, keeping the arm close to your head, and using it as your anchor point there. And I'm using foot assistance on the floor and exploring. That's as far as we'll take the one arm versions of the hanging. And that's as far as we'll take the general hanging concepts for now. I want to reiterate that one of the main reasons for this video is not so much to tell you how to program hanging in your, your physical practice when you go to the gym or when you're having a session. It's more, I'm trying to share with you the idea of inviting hanging into your daily life, of making it a habit, rather than just having it on a piece of paper and okay, I do two active hands today or something like this. It's like, no, okay, I do that, but that's as preparation as part of my routine that I'm doing Maybe I'm doing it to um, pre-stimulate or prime certain muscles that I'll be using. For example, working some active hangs um, so that I can be neurologically primed in the scapula in order to work with some overhead pulling. Um, this is the idea of, I'm waiting for my coffee, I'm gonna hang around for a little bit. I'm feeling a bit tight from working in the office, in the home office, I'm just gonna hang for a little bit and do a few hangs. This is more the perspective that we're looking at. And, um, 
But with this idea, you can build up so much more experience with the shoulders and time under tension than you would if you were only doing it as part of you know, a programmed practice. So I'll quickly just show you lastly um, how I believe that working specifically with hanging to produce effects in the neural drive of the scapula can benefit you in your overhead pulling. And one of the things I constantly bang on, on about is the, um, the ability to be able to perform a pull up um, with a type of global extension, which includes the chest high and as I said, for one of being you know, less specific, um, this kind of retraction and depression of the shoulders at the same time. So it's essentially like a active arch pull up. So if you build the neural drive in your scapula, active, chest up, now I can pull, retracted, and the chest touches the bar. This is a position that many people, even though having the ability to perform numerous pull-ups in more of a protracted version and pulling chest to bar, in very many cases cannot achieve one movement, of one um, rep of getting the chest to the bar because there's about normally around two or three inches missing. And these movements with working with the retraction will most definitely build that up for you over time. So lastly, one of the things I want to drive home is, you know, how often or how long should I do this for? Well, if it's a habit and you make a habit of it, you do it for the rest of your life. It's just something that you need to do. You need to hang, just hang around. So when someone asks you next time what you're doing and you say, yeah, I'm just hanging around, um, you want it to be quite literal. that You're just at home hanging around from your bar. Um, that's pretty much all I have to say. Now, one last thing I can add is that if you are progressing in your hanging work, one thing I do advise you to check out are the fat grips. Fat grips are really, really awesome just for getting your hands used to a different diameter. Um, it's quite obvious that hanging from a bar and only working overhead pulling from a bar is hugely restricted. Uh, why? Because it's a bar and it only has one diameter. Um, if you start using things like the fat grip, it's still very limited, but it's offering you another grip diameter. And what you'll find is that it completely affects the way that you active and passive hang other things you do from the bar. It uh, actually will bring out things that you may not have noticed. For example, issues with the elbows, whether it's neurological or whether it's injury related with the shoulders and the scapula as well. It really kind of renews your exploration into hanging. So the fat grips are something that I do recommend. Um, lastly, um, with regards to exploring different types of hanging, of course, things like walls, things like hanging from overhead beams, anything that you're hanging with a flat hand like this, um, climbing, which you're hanging from different positions with different grips and in different positions as well. Um, from the general perspective of improving um, your shoulder health, your grip, um, and many other things in relation to that, um, start with the bar, and from that point, explore further. Happy hanging.